recording the Masters, Ballfinger, Hemiolia Records, and V-Rail Electroacoustics. As you can see, we are two people, Paulina. Hello, welcome to everybody. Uh, I'm Paulina from uh, Hemiolia Records, and uh, we uh, record uh, master tapes and uh, sell them. Thank you for your Thank you. Uh, Vorstellung. Sorry. Presentation. <laughs> Presentation, okay. Now, my name is Uli Apel. I am a sound engineer. That means I come from the other side of the uh, microphone membrane, for example. Uh, I'm a sound engineer that's a freelance. I'm working for broadcast stations and also for the film industry. And I'm convinced, uh, I'm uh, concerned with things like uh, restoring old magnetic tape recorders because broadcast stations now want to archive their analog tapes and they need machines that are very good calibrated. And uh, it must be uh, the real thing that I am the only one in Germany who is able to do these things. Concerning of two things, I am uh, grown up with analog tape recorders. In the 70s, I had experience with Studer and Revox. And I have the uh, calibration tapes. Without calibration tapes, you have no chance to calibrate recorders. I am a member of Verband Deutscher Tonmeister. This is the Verband Deutscher Tonmeister in Germany. And I am a member of Analog Audio Association. That is uh, an um, association which is uh, concerned with uh, the uh, analog reproduction of music. And then, ah, telephone, yes. And then uh, Deutsches Institut für Normung. I am there responsible for the uh, microphones and headphones. Okay, now let's start with this. You see a package of tapes that Parotti recorded every auftritt every um, at every uh, concert a every concert he gave he made a private um, recording on a normal stereo machine and that is uh, the normal stereo machine that was available where he uh, where auftrat sorry my english is uh, <laughs> where yeah, he, uh, he had Thank you. And because of that, there are several tapes. You see it, um, CCIR and NAB. These are two different um, types of frequency response. And they have different um, speeds, 7.5 or 15 inches per second. And also, he used MPEX tapes. And I know it from experience of my own. Uh, it is my own experience that especially MPEX tapes sometimes look like this. There is Schimmel mold, I think that says mold. And they have uh, this also. You have tapes when you have it. 30 or 40 years in a plastic bag in a, in a cellar or something else like that, you have problems to uh, play, to record, no, no to, 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 uh, to play the, these tapes. Sorry, my English is... Uh, <laughs> okay. The other thing is that on these tapes, the, the, the sound on the tapes were recorded in several different machines. That means you also know it is stereo, it is two track, but which is the machine and how did this machine record the tape? And 
you know, this is, for example, the characteristics of the uh, bias for tapes. You have different tapes. This is taken from a uh, German Telefunken Laborbuch. This is uh, uh, nearly a Bible. When you have it, you have the chance to restore tape recorders. This is the Bible, green Bible called in Germany. <laughs> okay. To restore these tapes, you must bake them. That sounds horrible, but it's the only chance to let it play without problems. That means you have a bake oven, and you see it as 50 to 55 centigrade, or 60, that's also possible, several hours. And then when that tape is taken out of the oven, you have the chance to play it one time. One time. That means the uh, machine should be absolutely reliable, and you should take two machines as a take-up recorder, because when one fails, it's better to have a reserve. That is, that is important, because the especially MPEX and Quantigy tapes were produced with very much moisture, and the moisture comes out of the tapes during the 20, 30 or 40 years. The tape becomes wider, and the magnetism on the tape, the iron on the tape, uh, will be clutching your heads on the machine. You play three or five minutes, and after five minutes, you only hear <laughs> no highs, no things, only lows. And that is, OK, a possibility to save these tapes. OK, Hemiolia Studio. I must say I am glad that I realized that this is a Absolute analog studio, absolute analog. From the mixing console over the effects they have and the tape recorders, absolute analog. I am also an analog guy. When I produce in these times, I also use analog machines, analog tape recorders with Dolby or with Telkom C4 that is well known in Germany. It's a noise canceller, and you have an analog tape with about 90 decibels in dynamic, 90 decibels in dynamic, 96 decibels is the CD. That means you switch on the tape, and nobody believes that it is not digital. It is normal analog. OK. This is uh, a mixer. Today, the mixers are just only in a computer, and you have to have a mouse. You can track with a mouse, but an analog mixer means you have... Very good. Hello. <laughs> ah, Pietro. Hey, very good. I show a photo of you, and you do not look into the camera. Now you have the chance. <laughs> Very good. OK. This mixing console, uh, they made following to restore these tapes. This is Pietro. Yes. OK. This is the uh, mastering engineer at Hemiolia's sound is Perugia, I think it's. Um, this is in Savio. Savio, OK. And uh, where we make the copies. Yes. OK, thank you. You see all analog things. Also, these very, very important tools, especially this is a valve amplifier that was produced by Studer. I think that was around two or three years, not longer. And because of that, this machine is absolutely worthful because it's a Brilliant sound and complete, complete analog. And also these here are compressors and filters, also complete analog. And this is the machine 
to play back the original Pavarotti tapes. That means after the baking, after the mold, they took a Studer C37. And the Studer C37 is a famous tape recorder in, from Switzerland, complete tube driven. What you see here is, oops, these are the tubes of the amplifiers. These are the tubes in the power supply. This is the capstan motor. I have a photo from inside because I think it's inside more interesting as from outside. And they took this recorder and they record it. Okay, that's now audio precision. It's very good calibrated. That's normal, selbstverständlich. That's normal, okay. And they said, okay, the music, not only Pavarotti's music, all music, consists of a spectrum. A spectrum is nothing else than you have different levels on different frequencies. That means from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, you have the chance to get every frequency and this in a level dependent thing. That means you have, for example, 250 hertz. So, sorry, 250 hertz, it's around 70 decibels, or 1K is around 45 decibels. And when you do this and you have this in mind with an effect unit, you have the chance to calibrate every frequency range in level. And when you have several uh, uh, frequency ranges, you have the chance in a multi-track recorder, multi-track recorder means two-inch tape, and there are 24 or 16 tracks. And you have the 16 tracks with these frequencies. This is the example for the left channel, track one to track eight, and they only record this frequency range in the track. That means the stereo tape was divided in two times eight tracks. One to eight was left and nine to 16 was right. And then after this, they were secure because they had all the tracks on a normal uh, recording the master's tape. And they could then restore the frequencies. This is a master tape, for example, two inch. This is the MT15, MTR15 from Otari. That is the production master tape. After mixing, you see these tapes. Tapes are on the machine. This is the duplication chain. That means it's nice for me to see. It is Telefunken M15A. M15A, I'm familiar with that because every broadcast station in Germany uses these tapes recorders because they are the most reliable things. And then we have the chance to get that Ergebnis, the result of the result of the uh, recording with a brand new tape recorder. It's the Balfinger or Bolfinger tape recorder, which you see behind Pietro. <laughs> that means we have an original copy of a master tape there. We have special amplifiers and special loudspeakers. And from VREL, VREL, okay. And not a secret when you see a Studer C37 from inside, also Balfinger from inside. It's very, very good machine because Roland Schneider is the uh, constructor of that. He said it must be very, very friendly to service. This is from side. This is the back side. This is the front side. That means you can also fold, unfold it like a book. 
and you have the chance to calibrate that machine during the running of the machine. It is very, very easy, built in VU meters. And for example, here it is the, uh, the, the uh, spooling motors. Here is the um, capstan motor. This is the power supply. And this is the whole audio electronics, that means for recording or for uh, reproducing. And Roland uh, has now uh, a website where he offers these machines um, abhängig um, von, uh, depending on, thank you, <laughs> depending on what you want to have only to reproduce or if you want to have a machine for recording or mastering and so on and you can uh, order this machine in different ways.